Today we're going to be talking about continuous integration, something that most software projects should be using. Now for those of you who don't know, continuous integration, or CI as it's often referred to, is the process of continually integrating your code during development. Now this might not make much sense, but what it essentially is, is build automation and testing. To cut a long story short, in a software project where multiple developers across multiple different platforms are all working on that project and continually updating that code, a lot of things can go wrong. Someone, for example, might not compile their code on all platforms or in all configurations. And as a result, it might completely break the build for other developers or it just might basically contribute bugs. Additionally, some bugs might not be caught through a compilation error. I mean, I think it's pretty reasonable to expect someone to first compile their code before they actually commit it, especially if, if it's a serious software project. However, a lot of bugs obviously manifest themselves at runtime and they might only occur on specific hardware on a specific platform or in a specific configuration. It's really not that feasible for a developer to sit down and have to spend like an hour testing everything because they would probably rather be working on something else. In fact, you need them to be working on something else. So obviously some problems can only be caught during runtime by potentially using unit tests or some kind of testing framework that you probably integrated into the project to make sure that everything's running correctly. But it's quite common for you to want to run that on multiple platforms, multiple configurations, all of that stuff. And if that burden falls onto the developer, instead of the developer working on actually, you know, software engineering, on actually programming more code and fixing other bugs, they're going to be stuck doing all of the testing. Now that is not ideal and that's where continuous integration comes in, it can help us automate that entire process of making sure that the code compiles on all platforms in all configurations for everyone and then also run some basic tests or any kind of automation tests that your heart desires that you've actually created to make sure that everything is A++. This is definitely one of those things that you don't think you need until you realize that everything's just just getting out of hand. If we completely dumb this down to what it is at its core, basically what we want to be able to do is build our code after every commit that we make and then also maybe run the application to just see does it run without crashing? What's the output potentially? And that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be setting up a C++ project so that we can automatically build and then test our application every time a new commit is pushed to GitHub. And this is getting really bright. I think maybe if I just move this over here, we're going to dynamically change the set and everything's going to be A++ because it needs to be because I need to get this video done. Otherwise, my family is going to starve. So we're going to use Jenkins today as our continuous integration environment. Jenkins is completely free and open source. I'll leave a link in the description below for you guys to check it out. It's also something that we used on a number of projects at EA, so I quite like it. You can just run Jenkins on any computer, really. You could run it on the computer that you use to develop all of your code. However, typically you'd set it up on a server because you would want it to be running 24-7. And so I partnered with Linode for this video to make all of this happen. Now, what's Linode? I hear you ask. Well, Linode provides Linux servers that make it easy for you to host your app, site, or project in the cloud. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. So if you need to host like a website or a game server or set up a CI machine like we're doing today in this video, Linode has you covered. They have data centers all around the world, which means that you can set up a server in a location that is like geographically close to you, which means that you'll get that low latency and you'll get the fastest speeds possible. Best of all, Linode comes with 24 seven support that is 100% managed by humans. That's really important in case you need some help, they have got your back. I want to thank Linode for sponsoring this video, making all of this possible. I'll show you guys how to set up an actual Linode server so that we can get our Jenkins running on that and just how easy it is to set up Jenkins with Linode. And Linode have been nice enough to give you guys $20 credit on a new Linode account. More on that later. Now I've got a really basic C++ program that I've written here and I'll take you guys through that in a minute. But really the first step here is to set up something called a Jenkins file so that we can actually tell Jenkins what it is we want it to do with our project. So here we have our repository inside Ubuntu. And this is just a really simple C++ project as you'll see in a minute. So let me just take you through the repository and show you what we've got here. So first off, there's this premake5.lua file. This is just a script for premake so that we can actually construct our project files. We'll get Jenkins to automatically do all of that stuff for us. And that's why inside this scripts directory, we've got this Linux build.sh file. This script simply runs premake to generate make files for us. And once we've got those make files, we can call make to actually compile our project. 
We've also got this Linux run.sh file. This script here just runs our hello world program. Now, if we go back to our main repository folder, you'll see this hello world directory. Inside there, inside source, we have this hello world.cpp file. And you'll see that like, that's it. This is as simple as it gets really. We just have a hello world program here. And so finally, we have this Jenkins file in our root repository. This is, this is the important file. This is what tells Jenkins what on earth to do with our project. So the way that this works is it's just a text file. It's divided into stages here. We have this build stage and this test stage. So over here in the build stage, this is what Jenkins needs to do to build our project. So you can see here that there are multiple steps here and they're all just really commands. We're just echoing out building into the command line so we can see it. Then we're marking our Linux build script as executable. It's important to note here that by this stage, Jenkins has already checked out our repository. So we've got this, we've cloned the repository, and now we're able to obviously run the script files that we've got within the repository. And we do that by first marking them as executable here, and then just running them. Then we've got this archive artifacts part. This is what actually saves the built program as an artifact so that we can then later run this because you can see that the next stage is test. This is the testing stage. And what happens here is we, again, mark the run script this time as executable so that we can run it, and then we run it, and this runs our program. So that's it, that's really all there is to it. Now we have a project and a Jenkins file which instructs Jenkins how to build and test our project. Now let's pop over to Linode and take a look at how we can actually set up a new server and install Jenkins. The first thing we'll need to do is create some kind of server to run our Jenkins instance. Linode makes this really easy. All we need to do is click on one-click apps, select Jenkins, and then choose our region and Linode plan. This first one should be fine for our needs. We can give it a name and a root password, and that's it, we're done. Linode is now automatically going to allocate a server for us and install Jenkins on it. So where did it go? It's that easy. And that's one of the things that I love about Linode. It's so easy to get going because I don't want to spend time setting up server stuff. I want to spend time actually using my server to do the things I got the server for. To gain access to our server's command line, we can either SSH in or we can just use this console built into Linode's website. Once Linode has finished installing Jenkins for us, we can simply navigate our browser to our server's IP address and finish the Jenkins setup process. You can see that now Jenkins is in fact up and running and it's asking us to retrieve the root password from a file. So let's go ahead and do that using the command line. We'll plug in that password that we retrieved and now Jenkins is unlocked and we can continue on with the setup process. I'm just gonna select install suggested plugins, but if you like, you can customize which plugins actually get installed. Once Jenkins has finished installing all of our plugins, we'll need to create our first admin user. I'll just fill in these details here and click save and continue. I'll leave this URL here as is, and that's it, Jenkins is ready. We can now start using Jenkins. Now on a fresh Jenkins install, one of the things that you might wanna do is install Blue Ocean. Blue Ocean is just a kind of newer, more modern looking UI for Jenkins. This is completely optional. You don't really have to do this. And in fact, I tend to kind of switch between the two depending on what task I'm doing. But I am going to install Blue Ocean and show you what that's like. So we'll select Blue Ocean Aggregator here and just click install without restart. Once that's done, we can just click open Blue Ocean. And then let's create our first pipeline. A pipeline is going to be the actual continuous integration automation that we've been talking about. Our goal is to build and then test our project. Let's hook this up automatically through GitHub. Now to do that, we're gonna to have to create a GitHub access token. So let's pop over to GitHub and set that up. In our GitHub profile settings, I'm gonna click on developer settings and then personal access tokens. I'm then gonna click generate new token and I'll give it the name Jenkins example. We'll give it full repository access, full control of repository hooks, and I'll also let it read our user profile data and email addresses. This is important for Jenkins because it requires it. I'll click generate token and that's it. We've now got a token. Now I can copy and paste this into Jenkins without showing you what it is, of course, and I'll click connect. I'll select the organization that contains my repository and then the actual repository. And that's it. You can see that Jenkins is immediately going to try and execute our pipeline by trying to clone the repository and then do whatever our Jenkins file says. Let's click on this run here to see what exactly Jenkins is doing. And oh, you can see that it failed. Let's see what went wrong. Uh, so scrolling through all this code here, you can see that it cannot run program git and it says no such file or directory. That's because our server doesn't actually have git installed and it needs git so that it can clone the repository. Let's go back to our server's command line and install git. We're already logged in as root here, so no need to type sudo. I'll just type in apt-get install git. Once that's done, and while we've still got our command line open, let's install everything else that we'll need. We'll need to install make and then g++ so that we can actually compile our code. 
Once our server finishes installing everything, let's go back to Jenkins and we'll just click this rerun button here. This is going to rerun this specific run, meaning it's not gonna check out a different commit or anything, it's literally just going to rerun what just happened. All right, check out from version control succeeded and you can see everything else succeeded as well. Awesome! Eh, sorry about that. You can see here that there are two phases to our pipeline. We've got the build that passed in two seconds and then the test that passed in one second. If we drop down this Linux run script, you can see the output of our script, which says, hello world. So our program ran successfully, yay. And going back to our list of runs, you can see that this has a green checkmark status, everything succeeded. And our project is in fact sunny. Let's get out of Blue Ocean and see what regular Jenkins looks like. So we're inside Jenkins example, let's click on master. If we click build now, what's gonna happen is Jenkins is actually going to retrieve the latest commit. It's gonna rerun that whole clone process and execute our pipeline again. Let's see if that works out. Let's click on this specific run to get more information about it. You can see here that it's already finished running this and we do in fact have a build artifact that we chose to keep from our build, which is the Hello World program. This is literally the Linux program that we can, well, download and run on Linux. If I click it, it's just gonna download it. We can also look at our console output, which is just a kind of less formatted, less sorted version of what we saw in Blue Ocean. You can see that it's built it and then it's run it. Here's our Hello World output. If we flip back to our GitHub repository, you can see that in fact, our last commit was successful. All checks have been passed because Jenkins automatically reflects that data back to GitHub. So that's super useful. Now, the only issue here is that at the moment we have to manually click build now if we want to actually build the latest commit in our repository. But what we can actually do is set up a webhook so that every time that we commit, Jenkins will automatically run a build on that latest commit. Let's click on our repository settings and then webhooks, and then let's add a webhook. Now to set up this webhook with Jenkins, we just need to drop in the URL of our server and then add forward slash GitHub dash webhook. We'll change the content type to be JSON and we can leave the secret blank because we have no secrets. Make sure that pushes is selected here under the individual events and that's it. Let's click add webhook. Now let's go back to Jenkins and we'll open Blue Ocean and we'll just keep this view here with all of our builds open so that when we commit something new, we can see if it worked or not. So going back to our Linux computer now, let's go into the repository and change something. I'll go into that hello world source file and I'll change it to say hello Jenkins instead of hello world. Once we've done that, let's commit this. We'll go to our terminal. Let's just check our git status. Okay, cool, we've got that changed file and it's the only file that's changed inside this repository. So let's go ahead and add it and then we'll commit it. I'll just set the message to be updated program. Once we've done that, let's push it to GitHub. And you can see that as soon as we've pushed a new commit to the repository, Jenkins has received this push event to branch master and it's already running our pipeline. That was honestly seconds after that push was actually made. And you can see that a few seconds later, six seconds later, it's all completed successfully and our git message has come through here, updated program. So let's click on it and see what the result was. And you can see that our output is in fact, hello Jenkins. All of our new changes have come through and run successfully. So hopefully that gave you guys an idea of how you can actually set up CI for your project so that you're continually working in a stable environment. Now we did use Linux completely for our whole environment today, but you can definitely apply this to multiple platforms. That's kind of the whole point. It's very popular, of course, for applications these days to target multiple platforms. But if I'm working on Windows using Visual Studio, but my app also runs on like a mobile device or Mac or Linux, I don't wanna to have to continually just open up that computer and run all the tests and actually make sure that my code compiles on Clang and not just MSVC. I want CI to do that for me. And that's one of the really strong benefits of setting something like this up. Anyway, that's probably a story for another video. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Huge thank you again to Linode for sponsoring this video. You guys can try Linode out for yourselves. There's a link in the description to get $20 credit towards a new Linode account. Check it out and let me know what you think. You can use that credit to try out Linode's growing list of applications such as setting up a Jenkins server like I did in this video. We can really use it to host any project you like online. Give them a shot and let me know what you guys think and I will see you next time. Goodbye.